turpentine farming wouldn't be complete without the use of mules. And we kept five on our farmstead from uh, even when we moved up here in 1946 through 1978 when we ceased production of gum. And we have a lot of stories to be told about the mules, but this is some of the gear. This is a collar, mule collar, and this is a hams. We, uh, we had little rubber tired wagons that we pulled in the woods and usually carrying three to four barrels. And uh, that's about what a good dipper would uh, dip in a day. Some of the time we had britches to go on the mules. They were entailed with a good bit of leather, but they went around the rear shanks of the mule and hooked up there near to the collar. And also the long pieces hooked to the shaves and that enabled the mule when he was going downhill with a heavy load to keep the mule from getting his legs skint. We had one particular man, of course, uh, it's according to what ear I'm talking about, but for several years we had one man that tended to our five mules. He would keep their manes trimmed. He'd check their feet, be sure their hooves was in good shape, and uh, try to do a good job with the leather. He would grease it back in that time and keep the hams and the collar in, in good workable condition. Also, he checked the wagons, the little Hoover wagons were, they were called, and be sure the air was in the tires and that all boats was tight and the shaves wasn't loose and the flooring was in, you know, in good uh, workable condition. We had five mules here on the farm, most of the time during my era of turpentine production, and we would haul the mules from here as far as 20 miles on the back of our pickup truck and pull wagons. And sometimes it'd take two weeks to finish that particular uh, amount of trees there before the mule would get to come back home. And we kept a crib full of corn downstairs and we'd always sack up a, a croaker sack full of corn and a couple of bales of hay and carry with us and be sure that the mule had ample water. And daddy always required us to take the corn and break it in half so the mules wouldn't get choked. He always had that theory, he said he didn't want a mule to get choked over in the woods eating the corn, so we boys would always break it in half. One particular story was about a mule we had by the name of Doc. And we were over in Berrien County cupping some boxes and it was real wet and we had to cross a little creek near the Lapahaw River. And as we started across, my truck stopped and we had seven or eight men trying to push it out and no one, none of us could move it. And one particular employee was on the other side of the creek with a big mule we had, Doc and he was hooked to a wagon. So we backed the wagon right near the pickup and hook a chain from the front bumper to the back of the wagon. And when he clucked the dock to pull the truck out, the mule's tail, when he tightened up on the load, the mule's tail just stuck straight out. And the amazing thing was that I was in the truck and I felt that truck begin to move and I was trying to help what I could, but. That's an interesting story showing the strength of some of those big mules, how strong they were. He was on good solid ground, but we men were, the men that was trying to push the wagon, was, the truck was down in the water, but, but uh, the mule was far superior. Another thing, that one reason we moved, used mules so much, we had little three path roads around in the woods, and uh, you could drive most anywhere. We burned the woods, you know, before we cupped them, and some of our employees that worked the mule so much, one particular mule named Blue, he could call her and she would bring his wagon out through the bushes. And if she ran up against a tree as she walked slowly, she would back up and move the shafts one way or the other and get off the tree and come on to him. He'd holler and say, come on Blue. And that mule would come right to him when he had a bucket of gum, saving him toting that 60 pound way across the woods, the mule would come to him. That happened in a lot of cases. During that era of time when, well actually, the whole time, people always used mules, even back before 1900, mules and wagons. But as time elapsed and we were able to obtain pickup trucks, that was handy about hauling hands back into to the woods where we haul them as much as 15 or 20 miles. We'd carry them and place them out at various points uh, where they're where their uh, workplace was and we'd pick them up late in the afternoon. And that was one good thing about the pickup trucks. But then beyond that, we always, Daddy always tried to have a, a bigger truck about hauling the gum from the place that it was gathered to the uh, selling place over in Douglas. 
Uh, we had an old truck that would hold 37 barrels, and we, uh, we would put 37 on it. Daddy never did want us to carry a piece of a load. He wanted to carry a full load, and we would wait till we had a full load. We'd pick it up in various points around in the woods. We learned early in life to cut skid poles. Skid poles were little small four to six inch pine trees. We'd cut them down, sharpen the ends of them off, put them on the truck. When we get to our loading place, you pull them out and notch, particularly notch two ends where it would fit and wouldn't slip on the tailgate. Then two men would take it and push those barrels, 550 pound, up those skids and onto the truck. And then someone will jump up in there and set it up. You had special places to set it. It had to be stacked perfect for it to hold 37 barrels. But we always, always needed the mules and wagons because they'd go down little three path roads. And sometimes, like I said about blue, they would go in places there wasn't even a road. Just go across the clean woods uh, to where the master was calling, come, come, and the mule would come. I always related that uh, to a lot of things in life. During that era of time when, well actually, the whole time people always used mules, even back before 1900, mules and wagons. But as time elapsed and we were able to obtain pickup trucks. That was handy about hauling hands back into to the woods where we haul them as much as 15 or 20 miles. We'd carry them and place them out at various points uh, where their, where their uh, workplace was and we'd pick them up late in the afternoon. And that was one good thing about the pickup trucks. But then beyond that, we always, Daddy always tried to have a, a bigger truck about hauling the gum from the place that it was gathered to the uh, selling place over in Douglas. Uh, we had an old truck that would hold 37 barrels and we, uh, we would put 37 on it. Daddy never did want us to carry a piece of a load. He wanted to carry a full load and we would wait till we had a full load. We'd pick it up in various points around in the woods. We learned early in life to cut skid poles. Skid poles were little small four to six inch pine trees. We'd cut them down, sharpen the ends of them off, put them on the truck. When we get to our loading place, you pull them out and notch, particularly notch two ends where it would fit and wouldn't slip on the tailgate. Then two men would take it and push those barrels, 550 pound, up those skids and onto the truck. And then someone will jump up in there and set it up. You had special places to set it. It had to be stacked perfect for it to hold 37 barrels. But we always, always needed the mules and wagons because they'd go down little three path roads. And sometimes, like I said about blue, they would go in places there wasn't even a road. Just go across the clean woods uh, to where the master was calling, come, come, and the mule would come. I always related that uh, to a lot of things in life.